Yeah, well, it can't be Brian sailing without some actual sailing. <laughs> the day has actually come where I have cleaned the boat. Yeah, believe it or not. I'm Brian. Join the adventures as I share what I learned restoring a hurricane damaged catamaran with the dream to sail the world. I just cut this top piece out. One of the things someone told me is they're like, I could never do a project like that. I, I get too confused with the CNC uh, and the CAD and all that stuff. Well, you don't, you don't need CAD or CNC to restore a boat like this. Uh, I just, in fact, it's really, I wasn't even planning on it when I bought this boat to be able to do that. It was only because the designer contacted me and, and um, was able to get me the cut file so that I could cut this stuff out. Uh, with my CNC that that made me decide because I already had a CNC that made me decide I want to upgrade it and do that but otherwise I would have just uh, templated all this stuff take the old stuff and then use the um, you know piece it together and then use a flush tr trim router or mark it and then cut it but the CNC it just does such an accurate job if I did wasn't using the CNC I probably wouldn't replace so much stuff um, like this desktop I probably would have salvaged it but it's just so easy to, to cut out the new pieces and then put together new versus trying to restore the old uh, that ah, I just uh, this might as well do it. This is the CAD program I'm using, Rhino. I've got the files from the designer, but this is my own little working draft of it. So uh, there are both uh, 3D versions of the model. So uh, we can walk around in here. So when I went through here and designed the, the desk, so this is my desk that I designed. This is what the original looked like with a bar here with a sink and then and the washer dryer would be in this cupboard and then you had some different cupboards. Also, this other module was pushed back a little bit to do it. The other thing that we have on the plans is, so there's not only 3D models, there's all of the 2D sheets. And so here is, for example, this is the uh, headliner. Um, so we've, we've got the, the headliner cutouts that I'll do. And so what I do, uh, these are all the nesting for all of the different, um, all these things here. Each one is represents a sheet of plywood or a sheet of corsel. And they represent the pieces that you need to cut out. And so you can see how many pieces of plywood or corsel it takes to build the, uh, the boat. And there's not all of them turned on. I've got a few turned off over here. But there's, there's quite a bit. So what I do is this messy area up here is I'll decide what I want uh, and what I'm looking for. For example, here is the, the bulkhead that I cut with the puzzle joint. And so I have a plywood and I say, okay, I'm going to fit these two in here. And I just drag them over and I'll, I'll create the puzzle joint. Okay, so some of the, the stuff that I'll, that I'll do in here is I'll find what I'm looking for. For example, this is foam. These are all the pieces that I'm building out of foam and laminating. I've got shelves and a cupboard door. And this is where it's scarfed. And one of the things that I do that's kind of interesting is I'll take, here is the actual line for the cupboard door. Then I'll take and I'll do an offset and I'll, I'll cut this line and cut this line. I won't even cut that line, at least not yet. And so then I'll cut it out and then I'll fill it with filler. And then after it's done and I've laminated, I'll come back through and cut this line. And so then it's already pre-cored. So that, that's pretty cool. So once you have the pieces in here that you want, I'll lay them out and, and nest them how I want them. Then what I'll do, is, is I'll highlight them like this, and then you export them. So the CAD program is good for drawing, but it doesn't actually control. You can't send it without having, you need an additional piece to go from the CAD program into actually CNC cutting them. And so then I'll export the selected into a um, AutoCAD um, DW, DXF format. Um, and then that's when it loads up into uh, the CAM program. So we move from CAD, computer-aided drafting, to CAM, computer-aided manufacturing, I think. This is the ESTL CAM. It's super cheap. I don't know, it's less than $100. Kind of does what I need it to. <laughs> so that's why I use it. Because a lot of the other CAM programs are very expensive. So this is the desk. Let's look at this one. So this guy will include pieces of the desk uh, that I exported. Uh, so we've got desk, we've got a bulkhead here. I think this is uh, some other parts for the bathroom that I cut out of plywood. So once it comes in like this, you'll select the tool that you want to use to cut with. And it's set up based off of how fast it can go and the width of the tool. And because my router is you know, pretty chintzy, you have to go pretty slow. Uh, I think in plywood I'm doing around 
12 millimeters a second, maybe 10 millimeters a second. So then what you'll want to do is you, you need to decide whether you're going to do a part or a hole. And that depends on which, which side of the piece that the router bit will be on. So for example, we're going to do this door cut out as a hole. So I'll click on that and I'll click hole. And then you can decide if you want holding tabs in there, which basically will leave a little bit of space where it's still connected so that the part doesn't jar and hit the hit the thing. Uh, most of the time with these large pieces of plywood, I don't need to do that. But if there's a lot of small pieces, then sometimes I will um, put the holding tabs in. So then you choose the part, uh, we choose the part, click on this. Um, and then I've got this to set, you've got to set the depth that you want for every part. Um, so you, you set that and then once you do that, you can save the, um, the G code is what it's called. And so that's the actual instructions to the machine on what to do. And then you put in the depth. And so usually on my 13 millimeter plywood, um, I'm cutting it at 15. And then that'll do two passes because I've set my tool up to only do uh, a maximum of seven and a half per, um, per pass. So um, then you can simulate this and we can see it play. You speed it up so that it doesn't take you an hour. And the pieces to cut out it estimates at about 32 minutes. All right, so once we save that file onto this card, we insert it into our machine. Uh, then it's a matter of lining up the machine to the zero point. Once you have it lined up to the zero point, you go down to, um, this is a weird thing about this, you have to go down, because it doesn't have an auto home function, you go and reset all coordinates. And so then that knows that that's gonna start at zero. If you don't do that, it'll be totally messed up. So then we go here to main, and we go print from SD card. Once we do that, we're gonna just select the G code that we just made, turn on the router and hit print and it'll just go to town and you just need to watch it to make sure that you don't um it does you didn't mess anything up because at least in my case i have to watch it to make sure i don't mess anything up because i do that a lot uh, <laughs> but i've been getting better uh, i was just thinking i hadn't broken any bits but then i i broke one on working on the last piece i was doing here we are on my friend's 64 foot catamaran going for a little test sale this thing's a beauty. This thing is fast. Uh, it's it's a fast boat. It's a lot of fun. I quit the Space Center. As soon as I got a job offer, the guy goes, I'm going to double your salary and we're going to go to Maui for three months and go sit windsurfing every year. Let's go. Two weeks. I was in there writing my AVO. I'm quitting, boss. So I quit. And I've just been sailing ever since. <laughs> Why? I'm just about broke but not really <laughs> got a nice boat anybody want to go sailing <laughs> and other than that life's been good the last 30 years no how when did i quit 1989 i quit so i've been goofing off since 1989 just sailing building windsurfers and goofing off yeah but you were a professional sailor for a while weren't you uh for a little bit for about 15 years but I had it easy. I got a. I did well in a few races, so that steamrolls. So once you're on a race, somebody will see you and they go, "Oh hey, let's go to Greece and build a boat and go race over in Europe all summer." And then you go directly from there to you know the the whole traveling roadshow job type of thing. And then all the owners finally figured out they don't want their boats built custom at a yard because it's just too expensive so we would gather under a tent build a race boat or put one back together do a refit or do a few races with the owner and then till a better job offer came by and that's all professional sailing is now three hurricanes sitting here in this river a tree came by tried to pull out the anchor lines, so I went and grabbed the tree, chopped it all up, and made a bunch of veneers on the sides. So what would you say was your uh, greatest sailing accomplishment? Because you sail Olympics and everything, right? Yeah, but the Olympics is easy, you know? You get to come in every night and have a meal. Uh, you only sail like 40 or 60 miles a day. You do a World 1000, you're doing at least 100 miles a day. That's if it's not a win. I'd have to 
say the, the windward leg going around Cape Fear going into Wilmington was probably one of my all time memorable moments because I couldn't go out more than 50 yards off the beach. You had to tack, and we did that for like 30 or 40 miles, four boats right together. And then right at the end, we couldn't get a dagger board, and it was going to be the leeward dagger board coming into the beach. We couldn't get it to come up because it had seaweed in it or whatever, dead fish, or who knows. I was trying like mothers, our two hands fit, shaking the whole boat, trying to get it up. We can't get up, so we came in on the beach, flying a haul, so we wouldn't break the dagger board off. <laughs> to the haul, up onto the beach, through the finish line. But I got one better story than that, and that would be the Tahiti race. Mondell guys put on the Tahiti race. The way to win the race there is whoever's closest to the reef. You know, on that day, it's like eight foot swell running. Florida, so yeah, it's not 16 foot faces, it's 8 foot faces. Peeling down the reef as you're coming out of Moore Moore. And we had just the right angle of wind to go up wind and peel down along this reef with 8 foot waves just ripping down it. And we had gone in the last 15 minutes of sailing from dead last to dead first, all the way to first, by like 100 yards. And we're just both looking at the reef, we just close as we could to the waves, and just going up and over the waves, and uh, here comes the next one. And I go, Carlton, look behind you, because you're never going to see anything better than this in the rest of your life, except for maybe your kids. Sure enough, there's more more behind us, and 20, maybe 21s all lined up, we're all out on the wire, going over these eight foot waves, breaking down this reef offshore. Incredible, most incredible look I've ever seen. Uh, the challenge for today is get this curved corner on here. And I've done it a couple different ways. I've made some attempts, including this guy here, which I curved the foam, bent it with the heat, tried different things. But one of the things that I found works pretty well is to just make a flexible sheet like this. I just make it uh, on the flat panel and then I'm going to glue it around and then that'll make my mold and then I'll just put some other layers on top of it, maybe some core behind and some additional layers. So here it is after I put some putty on it. I just need some final sanding and it turns out pretty good. I don't really put any layers on top, I just put them behind and it's uh, really quick and easy to make those nice corners. I wish I had a dime for every time someone says, hey, uh, check your bulkheads, have you watched Parlay Revival? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's a totally different boat, right? So, uh, uh, the, the Antar anyways, we're not going to get into that discussion. But there is a reason why I check every square inch of my boat. So, this guy here, this is the main bulkhead. And people were saying last time when I, when I fixed the other bulkhead, that, that's just the salon bulkhead. And it's actually secondary to the fiberglass one behind it. Uh, but this one here is the main bulkhead. So, you got half inch plywood. Plus you have the foam core with all the laminate schedule on that. So this is a very beefy bulkhead. This is not just, and um, Antares has the FEA uh, load analysis on it that they published even. Okay, this image is directly from the Antares website. Uh, this shows the actual load analysis of the mast on that main bulkhead. Also, they've also published on their website the full loading. And so if you look at this, it's, uh, I think the loading is three times safety margin. So three times what it really needs uh, to work, which is 60,000 pounds. So you could probably just pick up this boat from just a single chain plate and hang the entire, I don't think I'd try it, but you could probably pick up the, the, the entire boat from just one chain plate and hang it there. So th this is a strong boat. You don't have to worry about that, but you do have to check for damage because, hey, another catamaran landed on top of it. And this is where... The, all the weight was where it busted through that post and so all this is new uh, but and and that weight landed on this bulkhead so I knew there was some repairs to do here right uh, that I know I have to cut this back into it so I'm checking out every square inch here and now uh, tabby doesn't look too bad maybe a little bit of uh, possibly delam there it's hard to tell but then it's hidden right check this out right there it's peeled off. Number one. Okay. <laughs> Polyester. 
that when tabbing gives and it's polyester, it always like that's how I how I pull out all the other tabbing. You just break the bond of the polyester, and it, you can just pull the tabbing out in one piece because the glass is so much stronger than the resin. Uh, so uh, that that looks good. However, I'm checking out the bulkhead. This bulkhead is totally solid. There is no issues with the bulkhead at all, and you can see the other the the other side of it. Uh, up through that crack, you can't, I mean, I can't see it on the camera, but through that crack, so I could check the other side of it. Uh, and then, of course, in this closet. I might have to take this closet out, uh, hopefully not. But if I do, I do. Uh, and get all this repaired. Uh, so yeah, so I might as well start grinding. <laughs> Again, uh, but now I knew this. I knew this had to, to to get fixed, and so just make sure I get this tabbing up here all squared away. Uh, this is just a temporary layer, so you can see this is the actual hull here, the deck, and then they just to get a smooth shape for the inside. They put a, this is a, a poly polyurethane foam, PU foam, and, and so you can see that because you can just rub it away. So that's more for insulation and just to give the hole a shape here, but the actual strength is behind here. So I gotta pull this piece of plywood out, uh, this back, and uh, get this all squared away. With a little bit of finesse, I was able to put the tabbing in and just slide it behind that cupboard. And so all new tabbing in there, all epoxied in, and I put the new piece of plywood trim up there uh, after I had fixed everything underneath. So this section, all good to go. So my next goal is paint in here. I really wanna paint. I don't know, I'm getting really antsy to paint. Uh, so in order to paint, I want to get all the fairing done first. And so, but I'm getting close. I've got to do this little section up here that I've just put some foam in. Uh, normally it's it's just fully filled with putty, but I put some a little bit of foam in there. I'll sand it back and putty the top layer. Uh, and then I've got to do, finish the fairing here that I started where I did this repair. Uh, and that one and then this one that I just did that that has just the first coat on hasn't even been sta sanded uh, And that's it. Okay, that's not really it. Then I got to fair all the all the new furniture sand down this uh, And get this ready to paint maybe Rip out the rest of this stuff. I'm back working nights almost always till like 12 or 1 in the morning Because uh, I can sleep in because I don't have a job yet. Well, I do have a job, I accepted an offer today, so I'll be starting work in a couple weeks. But I'll still get stuff done, it's just the way it is. Um, all right, so I started fairing this, um, getting pretty close here, and there and down there. It's a pain to sand in that corner because it doesn't reach, like the, none of the sanders, so I have to sand that by hand. Um, what I'm working on now is down here under the desk where the, uh, electrical panel goes and I got a different electrical panel I got a blue C system 360 panel which I really like uh, I picked it up on eBay for a good price um, so but it's it's a bigger format it's wider and so I'm gonna expand this out so I cut all the pieces uh, this piece will replace that for the edge This will replace the door here. And then I also re, uh, cut a new piece for uh, this guy right here. A new access panel fits right in there. Uh, so the, the panel here was actually pretty good, uh, but I'm replacing it because it was cut up because this is where you put all a lot of the monitoring equipment and so it was all Swiss cheese you know for all the different instruments and I'm probably gonna have different ones in a different format so uh, I figured I'd start fresh with a new piece so um, yeah let's get this guy cut out and see if I can mount this panel day has actually come where I've cleaned the boat yeah believe it or not actually I kind of cleaned it up a couple times but then like a couple days later it was a mess. And so this time I cleaned it up and I'm gonna show it to you before I uh, make a mess. So coming in the salon door, we have the desk. 
My little cubbies that are currently being well used. My fiberglass cutting table up top. Uh, all the stuff I've started fairing. Um, so this is in. This guy up here is all fared. So we're, we're coming together. That corner there is fared. Uh, all this is tabbed. and uh, I kind of over tabbed stuff, but you know, you can't, stuff can't be too strong. Um, so this, this is pretty fair there, pretty much done. Just a final sanding on a little bit. I started stripping off all of the vinyl so I could put up new vinyl. Um, and then I got to take off all the, the foam, which makes this huge mess. This stuff here. These floorboards here, I just need to uh, paint and put the tank back in. Then I can put those floorboards back in place. Um, this is the only bilge that I haven't got cleaned under here. I did pull the engine out, so the engine's gone, but I'm um, going to clean that bilge up. Maybe I'll do that tomorrow. Um, and then uh, this will all be ready to paint. Uh, this side of the boat is actually in fairly good shape. I mean, I'll, I'll probably do a little painting and um, restaining and stuff like that. And there's no real structural stuff to do over here, uh, except for a little bit on the outside in that bathroom. So I got this piece of subfloor. I need to finish the subfloor. Um, so it gets raised up three quarters of an inch and I'm actually gonna raise it up uh, with some stringers. The desktop will probably be uh, different. This desktop and this desktop, I'm actually don't think I'm gonna use plywood. So that'll be a surprise. I'll show you uh, down the road in the future. Um, so I've got that and then I've got this all ready for my um, new con new uh, panel. So this is cut so that it fits the uh, electrical panel. It'll be recessed in there. It's a uh, Blue Sea Systems uh, 360. I'll have to show you that. I got it at home. And then this will open. It's just temporarily put on there. And then this is a removable panel here that will have uh, one of those push lock things. And then this one here, I think has hinges and some screws. Just dry fit in there. Uh, I got that cleaned out, ready for paint back there. A lot of this sanded, the door frame removed so I can paint all this stuff. All right, so then these bilges are all been scrubbed down and are pretty much ready for paint. Uh, the engine's out, of course. These uh, closets are in. I just need to... Uh, fair them and put the doors on but that should be pretty easy the uh the upper drawer our shelf is in i'll probably put some tabbing on that um this closet here this piece is cut and just loosely laid in here i'm going to reuse the top piece um so that piece will go back on top um so i gotta assemble that uh, this guy here i've got pretty much cut out uh, but I need to laminate it and um, get that ready to go. Um, I put in this new floorboard here. Floor. And so this crack here, this was cracked all the way down, right? So this is where that big crack was all the way down. So I added all the layers the other day. Added all the layers and then this piece here was removed. I had to reassemble that. Um, and got that put back in, just needs to be fared. Um, and this floor is just temporarily set in here so I can still get room to work and paint down here. All the layers, um, down here are on and that's pretty much ready for paint. There, I, I made it a little bit thicker here, but not much, just a little bit. But I can get away with it because I ran it basically to the bulk, from one bulkhead to the other so that there won't be any hard spots because the bulkheads are already your hard hard spots the only structural damage left on this entire boat is right there well it's basically this whole area thanks everybody for watching and thanks to those who leave those great comments for me i really appreciate it and also give the video a like um We've got lots of stuff coming up in the future, so be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks, of course, to all the patrons who help support the channel. Have a good one.